Getting Started How Video Games Are Made Playing video games is a popular pastime for people of all ages. For most people, their video game journey begins at the Apple, Google Play Store, Steam, or video game store and ends at the couch. So it's easy to think games are no more than simply electronic toys and can be made with a few clicks of the mouse. But in reality, getting a game in the hands of consumers is oftentimes a very long and tenuous journey that can take years from start to finish. Nowadays, video games combine all the greatest elements of art and entertainment and place them in an interactive medium that can draw the player in and create a unique experience. Whether it's the addictive thrill of a multiplayer shooter, the cooperative camaraderie of an MMO, or the wonder and immersive storytelling of an RPG, video games are one of the only mediums that not only allow us to watch, but interact, influence, and exist within their worlds. So how do they do it? How are games really made? Whether you're looking to create a small indie game, a mobile game, or work with a large AAA studio, the basic sequence of creating a game will remain pretty much the same and falls in these three stages. Pre-production, production, and post-production. Pre-production phase. Pre-production is the first phase of the video game development production cycle, and it is critical to defining what your game is, how long it will take to complete, how many people and or resources you'll need, and how much everything will cost. In a professional environment, pre-production can last from one week to more than a year, depending on the size and complexity of the project. A good way to gauge how long your pre-production should be is, pre-production should be 10 to 20% of the total estimated time of the game development. So if you're working on an eight-month project, your pre-production should last a few weeks to over a month. The three biggest components in pre-production are the concept, the plan, and prototypes. Every game begins with an idea. Whether your idea or concept is born from a story you've been dying to tell, a unique form of gameplay you'd love the world to experience, or a new piece of technology that you feel will really make your game stand out, a good idea is always the start of the pre-production process. The plan is where all the information is put together and fleshed out. In many professional studios, this will be recorded in what we call a game design document. The purpose of design documentation is to fully express the vision for the game, describe the contents, ensure the team members understand their roles and map out a production plan. That being said, game design documents are usually extremely long and detailed and can be quite time consuming to complete start to finish. However, there's a fair amount of debate in the industry on the actual effectiveness of a game design document. This is mainly due to the fact that no matter how well you document and plan a game, many elements will change drastically during the pre-production and production phases. This can happen for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's due to technical limitations, game mechanics not working well together, hardware or software limitations, or even key developers or artists leaving the project. Thankfully, over the last few years, many studios and developers seem to be acknowledging this and have began adopting the much smaller, simpler, and more flexible macro design document. A design concept spearheaded by Mark Cerny, the lead architect and producer of Sony's PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita, as well as a game industry veteran who's designed such titles as Uncharted, God of War 3, and Killzone 3, just to name a few. A macro design document is a very short one or two page plan that contains high level descriptions and can be expanded upon as needed over the course of the game's development. Whether you start with a full game design doc or a macro design doc, at the very least your plan should include the game concept, the core game mechanics, gameplay features, gameplay breakdown, and project scope breakdown. The main goal of pre-production is not only to plan and fully flesh out your ideas, but also to prototype and test these ideas. Prototyping is creating a rough, functionable test of your game's mechanics, functions, TEC, and or art direction. In the early prototyping phase, actual game and art assets are unnecessary. Functions and mechanics can be tested using primitive objects from the game engine, free or purchased stand-in assets. One of the keys to success in developing any game is to prototype a lot and prototype often. This is especially important to new developers or when developing a feature or function you're unfamiliar with. Prototyping is extremely important in the pre-production process 
because prototyping is a very easy way to find your team's limitations and determining whether you'd like to work around these limitations or extend your production time to overcome them. Prototyping is key to helping you or your team set and establish a realistic planned timeline of how long it will take to complete your game. It can also better help you find the most enjoyable and unenjoyable aspects in your core gameplay mechanics.